How do you go from a perfectly healthy and normal spine to a scoliotic curve? Well, for adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, it's a very interesting phenomenon. And I'm going to show you how that works. With a normal spine, we're looking for three curves from the side, from the uh, sagittal plane. We're looking for the lumbar lower doses. We're looking for uh, thoracic kyphosis and cervical lower doses as well. So under this shape, the spine is under low tension. But there's a phenomenon called RASO, which stands for Relative Anterior Spinal Overgrowth, which causes the actual vertebra to change shape. Instead of the vertebra being, vertebra being uh, perfectly rectangular, you start to develop growth at the front edge of the vertebra. The anterior height starts to increase in relation to the posterior height, and that causes wedging. Now, if you stack one vertebra on top of the other, you start to increase the tension on the spine, and it starts to become a flat back syndrome or hypokyphosis. Now this increases or can increase even more into thoracic lower doses with more increase in wedging as the child goes through a growth spurt. So when this happens, you want to reduce the tension. But before I get there, I just want to say it's really important if you have any kids with scoliosis or any adults for that matter to avoid extension exercises because all that's going to do is increase the amount of load on the spine. In order for the spine to reduce the load, it rotates. And it rotates oftentimes pretty hard. And you'll get rib humping as a result. And rotation, with rotation comes the traditional scoliotic curve. That's the biomechanics of scoliosis.